Okay, I got the bottom of the slab done, uh, coated, and now the top I'm going to do, uh, and I'm going to do two coats on the top. You mix Rubio, uh, three parts to one part hardener, activator. Um, you want it, you want to sand uh, your slab. When you have differential grain like this, you get kind of more flat sawn grain here, you got end grain here, a lot of curl. Um, you have to use an orbital. You can't, if you run this through a big time saver machine at 150 grit, you're going to see all the scratches going through these areas. So you, you pretty much have to do an orbital. They recommend no finer than 120 grit, I think, something like that. Um, that's just what one of these uh, guys that sell the product told me. You don't want to go finer. Um, I'm at 150 grit orbital is what I'm, what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to start applying it. You don't work in very big areas. You don't need a very big pad. This is actually a bigger pad than what I normally use. This is all I've mixed up to do this top in one coat. I'm not, it doesn't, it doesn't soak in like, uh, you know, Danish oils and stuff like that. So I'm just going to start applying it. Probably end up speeding this up. And you want to basically put it on like this for not more than, I think, six minutes, something like that. And then you want to start uh, wiping it off. The typical way you put it on with, a, with a, red, a red pad like this, and then you go over it with a, a white pad, and then you go over it with a uh, cotton towel to get to get to get up. You don't want to leave drips or anything on it. It will harden and it will not come back off. You have to sand it off. So what I can do is I can just keep going over this area and then go over to an area here. Rubio goes a long way. I covered uh, 650 square feet of flooring, Brazilian cherry, with less than a quart. Did about 100 square feet at a time with a pad buffer, if you want to call it that. And the testing I've done with my Rubio samples, uh, I put lacquer thinner right on there. I do it in front of, yesterday I did another little test just to show a woodworking customer. As soon as I took that lacquer thinner out, he just started cringing as I poured it on the Rubio finished walnut. Let it sit there. It kind of went against every natural instinct that a woodworker has and uh, didn't do, did do a thing to the to the walnut. Now this this side here has been coated once already. This is bark. It's very 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 porous. So I'm just doing another coat here. It really tends to be dull with just one coat in areas where it's porous. Now the only thing I haven't really tested is the uh, Trying to, you know, the finished product isn't, I guess even if you did waco oil or something like that, it would be pretty, pretty uh, dull after a while. <clears throat> I don't know how long it takes. I did my copper river table and that's just basically waco Danish oil. And now it's been done for I guess about six, seven months. Still looks fantastic. And that's it. That's the only finish I have on that table. No film finish whatsoever. This stuff's zero VOCs. There's absolutely no smell. I mean, they tell you to use it in a well ventilated area. But it when I did my floor, 650 square feet, the house, it, it's it had a nice oil smell. You do a film finish and anything like that. 
Your, your house smells horribly for quite some time. Okay. Now I'm going to grab a rag. Now you're supposed to use a white pad to take it up. I just go right to the rag. I think they tell you to do the white pad because doing a floor, you're tending to have it on the surface and maybe it starts setting up. But this will stay in here with the hardener and start kind of gelling up after 12 hours. You say it's got, a, I think, a four hour working window, four to six hours, something like that. I've, I've, used, I've gone up to eight hours, you know, where I mixed up some and I did some and I needed to do another coat the next day. And I let it go for eight hours. And it was still fun. This stuff is pretty thick. You don't want to do too big of an area. <laughs> and you want to wipe this until it, the rag just goes over it clean and it basically feels dry to the touch. These are non-absorbent and you don't want to use a very big pad because sometimes I think more Rubio kind of gets clogged up in the pad than you end up putting down on the on the wood, so you don't have to mix up a lot of the product. I was thinking if you had an orbital, uh, I haven't thought of much, but if you had a, a you know, not a just a vibratory sander that you could somehow hook these to a, if it had a hook pad and it hooked onto this, you could just run that vibrating thing and go back and forth but your pad would be bigger. I don't know how well you can press down because I'm pressing down pretty hard to squish any material out. You can, probably can't see it on the camera, but. You probably can't see it on the camera, but there's actually a film that I'm pushing down and it you just kind of keep spreading it. Working it into the grain. That's why you want the. That's why you want the. Uh, you want to use a coarser sandpaper. You know you don't want to sand it any finer than. I'm sanding at 150 grit. So this is not a film finish. This is an oil. It's in the fibers. It molecularly bonds with the fibers, whatever that means. Maybe it's nanotechnology. I think it's a linseed-based product. If you left a drip on here uh, the next day, it would be hardened, and you'd have to sand it off. It's it's hard. It's a, when it dries with a hard product. When I did my floor. I use one of those big buffer pads with the red and then the white and then you put a, a white cloth under the white one to finish it off. I don't know what happened but I left like a splatter and didn't see it and it's there 10 years later on the floor you can see it and it's hard. I'm going over this area twice. This is all end grain right here, and I got a little bit left. 
I won't have enough for uh, eight hours from now. I can scuff sand this 220 grit very lightly, and then I'm going to do another coat. Now this is Rubio Mono Coat. It's supposed to just be one coat. They advertise that you can't put a second coat on. It won't absorb in. But if you have if you have end grain, very porous wood, when this is uh, it's looking pretty good, but in these end grain areas, it's going to look drier. And the, the boards, test boards that I've done, where I do two coats, it, it looks, uh, it has a little bit more of a sheen, barely, uh, and it looks more uniform. And then I gotta figure out, I gotta get some of their maintenance oil, and I gotta put some of that on the, on the top. If they tell me if you use pledge or wax, then that will interfere with the ability to, to put on more Rubio in some way. I guess you'd have to, you know, you have to strip it. Keep in mind, this is an open cell um, top. It's super natural looking. This is, this is the most natural looking product I've ever put on a slab. But there basically is no scratch resistance. The scratch resistance is directly uh, correlated to how hard the wood is. So in areas if you have a lot of bark, if you don't want, you can't really leave the bark on totally. I, I sand it down, I leave it on very thin. It's on the sides, uh, so it's kind of protected. But bark, you can take your fingernails and just scratch it very easily. So you really don't want to have any area on top that has bark, uh, it, you know, you have to be very careful not to drag anything across it. Of course, they always say you have to be careful on these tops, no matter what the surface is. You have to treat it like the hood of, a, of your favorite car. You don't drag stuff across the hood of your car. As you can see, there's not a whole lot that's coming off here. And um, this stuff doesn't come up out of the pores like Waco oil does. You know, if you dump that on and flood it. All right, I will give you a close up. These lights are pretty harsh. They are, uh, and I, I and I have I can't go very far because of a I have an extension cord on here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I will slide my table up here, and then I can uh, maybe see down the end here. Get this off of here. All right. So, oops. Sorry about that. Let's see, what can I get an idea of what this looks like here? <clears throat> now this is uh, this is the Rubio Pure. I think that's what they call it. It's the natural, pure, clear, whatever. Uh, my uh, one buddy, he thinks that Castle Brown looks better, but he's more or less dealing with steam dried walnut, which basically you would not have all these color variations in steam uh, steamed walnut. This is you know this is natural walnut that's just been shed dried for probably two years, and then put in my DH kiln. That's a dehumidification kiln. Steamed walnut is what they do is uh, you got the sapwood here, which uh, you know most people do not want in S4S walnut boards, four by 
you know, four quarter, five quarter, eight quarter, etc. And what they do is they cut walnut in, in the boards and they leave, they, they don't care about cutting out the sap. They stack it up tight together and they put it in a pressure vessel and then they apply high pressure steam, high temperature steam, something like that for, I, I think like 30 days and it, it basically washes out all the all the color in the heartwood into the sapwood and so it bleeds out all these different variations which makes walnut uh, really pretty you get all the purple tones the red tones all this stuff okay so uh, that's it for this go around I'll wait till tomorrow and I will do this all over again which you're not supposed to have to do but I think it looks, this looks pretty good, so we'll see, maybe this is going to be, uh, I mean, I don't see dull spots at all, it's, it, it, it looks great, um, but we'll see, maybe tomorrow I will do a second coat, and then, I mean, basically then I think you've got uh, seven days till this is cured with the, with the hardener, but I gotta, I gotta read up on that, otherwise if you did not use the hardener, I believe you have to wait uh, like 20 some, 30 some days. For this stuff to be fully cured that's why you want to use the activator uh, and the activator does make the product more resistant to stains uh, which is proven with my other testing where I'm dumping lacquer thinner I mean I don't know anything worse you could put on a surface and it didn't leave any marks so that's it this is one of my test boards I've been beating the crap out of this thing all week this is two coats of Rubio this is solid walnut and uh, I did a I did a coat of the uh, and this is not this is the Castle Brown color. This is a buddy came over and we did these sample boards. This is sanded to uh, this is sanded to 150 grit on a time saver, and then we applied two coats and uh, one coat. And then eight hours later, I lightly scuffed it with uh, a sanding block, one of these uh, like. 220 grit sanding blocks. I just went over it lightly, uh, wiped it off, and then I did a second coat um, eight hours later. And now these have been uh, these have been dry for 30 30 days. So this is fully fully cured. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner. This this people cringe if you were thinking about putting this on anything. Now denatured alcohol, if this were waco oil, if I just put a drip, every drip on waco oil would just, basically the, the finish would disappear, it would be a lighter color, but the beauty of waco oil is, and I actually did that on a piece, is you just take a little waco oil on a rag and you wipe it around, you let it soak for a while, you wipe it off and the spots are gone. That's the beauty of waco oil. Waco oil and this product don't have a whole lot of scratch resistance. As you can see there's a scratch right there. Um, if you take something really sharp, my fingernail, and I gouge it really, I just left a mark in that finish. So that's the, that's the drawback to this, is you have to be careful with your top. You can't, uh, you got to treat it like the hood of your car. Um, and so, repairability, I haven't done any testing with that. You would lightly uh, scuff sand with like a 120 grit and you would you'd work this area and then you would apply the mono coat and I think you kind of blend it out. The reason I'm using the uh, pure on this uh, top back here is is that it's easier to blend. When you get into the colors they're harder to when you were gonna fix a top it's harder to um, it's supposedly harder to fix. I have not done any kind of repairing uh, any of that kind of stuff. So. Here we go. Here's uh, here's here's denatured alcohol. I'm just gonna put some on here, like that. And here's some lacquer thinner. Let's put some lacquer thinner on here. Now nobody in their right mind would ever put lacquer thinner on a finished a finished top. And this is believe me, this is lacquer thinner. And I'm just gonna let them sit there for a while. And I've done this test three times. And on this board, in these spots. And it hasn't, I ha, you can't notice any uh, effect on the finish. I'm letting that sit there. I'm going to let that sit there for about three minutes. And, and then I'll just wipe it up. And it's, uh, that's pretty impressive uh, to me. 
and actually the, the lacquer thinner is starting to uh, evaporate. I can see it, and sometimes you'll you'll it'll just look, you'll you'll just see like kind of where it was once you wipe it off. But literally in five minutes, it's it's gone. I have not done you know these ASTM tests, whatever they call it, when they do these finishes, where they 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 put these products on for. X number of hours, and I'd have to go read up on it. <clears throat> I know, uh, like Mohawk, their 2K Poly, they've got a whole list of all these products, and it's a it's a, a rating from one to five or something like that. Okay, so it's been it's been on here long enough. I'm gonna wipe this stuff off. Now keep in mind, this is an open grain material, so anything I dumped in there went down into the grain. I'm, I don't know how much Rubio fills the grain. I have, you know, I, I should take a loop, a high power loop and look at this and see if the grain looks filled. You know, because I am, I am wiping it around, wiping it around, and, and, and maybe it is filling the grain, but it's supposed to go in the grain, not on top of the grain. It's, that's supposed to bond with the wood fibers, which means that it's going to it's going to, but it is kind of thick, so I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm going to go back and look on this slab. There's no way for me to do it on camera to show you if a grain is full. I have to look with a loop. All right, so there we go. Let's see if I can get this up here, and you can see. And this area here, what looks different, that's in the wood. This is, a, this is kind of a, a curly area right here. But you, you can see there's absolutely no marking on this. That to me is pretty impressive. Obviously, if you spill a drink, you want to wipe it up. You don't want to test your top and see if you can screw it up or wreck it. So I'm giving I'm giving Rubio a thumbs up. I was really skeptical. Uh, you know, different types of woods. I'm not sure uh, how it's going to be affected by different kinds of stains. But it's supposed to be very repairable, um, just like just like the top I did right there. I just put Rubio on that top, and uh, if I can zoom in here, I just did that about a half hour ago. And I will show that. Uh, I think I already showed that in this video. So, anyway, that's it. Thanks.